Welcome back to the channel, folks, to a video that I'm going to be calling Short Sighted. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing a short film today uh, because I feel that some short films do not get anywhere near the recognition that they deserve. And I'm sure it's something which you would agree with as well. So if this video does very, very well, then it's something which I will turn or potentially turn into a regular series or segment anyway, where I will then take subscriber recommendations, submissions, and then also filmmaker submissions. So if you are a filmmaker and you want your short film to be featured and reviewed, then please give this video a thumbs up as that will tell me that you guys want to see more videos just like this. So, welcome to the first and maybe the last short sighted. <laughs> Today I'm going to be taking a look at a sci-fi short called The Fisherman. It's something which you may actually be uh, aware of or something that you heard of. For me, it's one which I was incredibly familiar with when it came out. It turned up online it was about a year and a half ago now, just over a year ago, something like that. It was April of 2017. Now, I will, of course, leave a link to the video down below in the description box. And please, please do go uh, and check it out. Because, again, although I'm going to be reviewing it in its entirety, and I will be discussing spoilers for the film, you have to experience it. It's a great short film. So, spoiler alert... I really like this film. So, anyway, so the plot of this, uh, this 20 minute short film, it follows a down and out fisherman in Hong Kong. He has one arm, and the arm is, it's kind of like a Jaws meets Alien, or at least that is actually one of the descriptive terms for it. He has almost like a harpoon end uh, attached to his one, his one arm, his amputee. And look, we open with some fantastic CG work for a very, and again, for a very low budget film, this CG work is astounding. We open with a dream sequence. We see a creature, something that is clearly plaguing this man's thought, and potentially the very same reason that he only has one arm. But although I say that, I say that with a caveat that it's something which is later confirmed probably to not be the case, though I really like that theory. We learn that this man is called Mr. Wong. He's a struggling fisherman, he isn't catching enough, and he's basically the laughing stock, and he owes rent, which is a clear indication that this man is uh, of desperation now. And as the owner of the boat that he rents from comes out to him and demands that he pays up his rent, he runs off. He runs off into the harbour and he says, no, I'm going to give this one last push and goes off. And it's a great opening sequence. It really sets the stage for this short film in a way which I think is really quite masterfully done. And I think it's probably one of the benefits of having it as a 20 minute short. Although, of course, some short films are less and maybe a little bit more. But this is a really, really good opening. So he heads off into the harbour and he, of course, sees larger boats and he instantly thinks they're scaring off the fish. They're scaring the fish away and he's not going to catch anything here. So he makes perhaps one of the worst decisions of his life, or maybe the best decision of his life, who knows. And he heads out into the harbour, into murkier waters that he doesn't normally fish and he isn't very familiar with. It's here that things start going astray and he catches something that is undoubtedly much more than he bargained for, an alien. Now, of course, a fight ensues and he survives, but then, of course, more come down into the ocean, and that's it. That's the plot. Uh, I won't go into too much more details here and there, but that's it. Go and watch it. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, it is written and directed by a Spanish filmmaker, Alejandro Suarez Lozano, and the direction that this film has is genuinely superb. Short films are often commented on their ease as the story doesn't really need to be all that much, because it is, of course, a condensed first, second, and third act. But then there is also the flip side of that, where people don't often comment on, is that a short film has to catch you quicker, and has to grab your attention, and, if needs be, it has to instill tension and fear at a quicker rate. So that being said, shorts are not easy. You also have to deal with incredibly small budgets, very, very tiny. And this particular short is handled with a almost like a bigger budget feel. It really, really is. It features subtitles, but the actors involved in the project cross over 
the language barrier with their acting. And this is often considered to be very much hit or miss, or at the very least, in my view, it is when you have actors of a different market as opposed to the Western domestic market. But like I said, these actors perform incredibly well. And when I first saw this short film, you know, back when it was released online, I liken this to, I believe it's the South Korean film Host or The Host. If anyone remembers that, it is a feature film uh, and it follows essentially like a homegrown mutant fish of sorts in the waters. And look, it's it's not exactly the same, of course, but it's one of those films which I saw and I, and I went, yeah, no, no, this is giving me those kind of vibes. So watch it and let me know if you get the same type uh, of vibes when you uh, when you see them both. So in terms of the actors interacting with the special effects, now this is again one of those things where a short film, or this particular short film should I say, has absolutely excelled. Nine times out of ten, even in bigger budget films and movies, when real world live action beings begin interacting with special effects, whatever they are, it doesn't matter, that is where you then enter the world of the uncanny valley and the mind clearly knows that this is not real, but they did really, really well here. And I'm not going to shit on the Marvel product at all, but even if you go to Infinity War, there's a few scenes where Thanos is picking up people or say Hulk, uh, Bruce Banner in the Hulk Buster armor. It's super un uncanny valley. And this has a somewhat, or at least compared to those particular scenes, because those, those scenes in Infinity War are really not that good anyway in terms of the effects. This has a better live action interaction. Uh, and again, it's not to poo poo Marvel, but it's to show you that even a large, we're talking an incredibly large tempo movie, still suffers from it. And it's to do with lighting and grading. So this particular film has chosen lighting and grading, which is all at night for this particular reason. So when you're dealing with something at night, and this is why I say that. You know, a lot of, say, uh, Pacific Rim, for instance, worked really, really well at night time because you see the kaiju and the color grading, the lighting, so on and so forth. It, we don't cross it over into that kind of uncanny valley. Then if you compare it to Pacific Rim Uprising, it looks noticeably worse, uh, or at least in terms of the live action interaction. Uh, the color palette is all warped. And again, it's just one of those things. It's, there's no right or wrong, but they've worked within the confines of their budget. They know that they're limited and that's why they've chosen to do it this way. And it's great, it's a testament to the filmmaker's choice anyway. And although it isn't entirely perfect, it doesn't actually look as low budget as it is, which goes hand in hand with the practical effects as well. So there is a shot where the man loses some blood from the neck uh, and it looks fantastic. It genuinely, it looks really, really, really good. So the color of the blood is on par with what it should be. Now we know this may seem like, what am I talking about, Mr. H? Why, why are you talking about this? Because it's like, was this a gripe? Why are you pointing this out? But it matters. Like, it really, really matters. And it's something which is often overlooked when you're dealing with a short film. The, just the coloration of blood. Uh, but it just makes this a better film uh, all the more for it. So again, it's something which you have to take a look at because it conveys something a little bit more realistic, uh, I believe, anyway. Now, again... Uh, in my reviews for normal films, I'll always talk about the score where appropriate. This score is very, very well crafted. It is really, really, really good. And for a short film, it is excellent. So it adds more tension, more flavor uh, to an already pretty great short. And it just builds nicely uh, and it pulls on those emotional moments and you know, the heartstrings here and there. It makes you feel for this guy. Uh, it's one of those things where... I feel a lot of people don't tend to comment on scores as much as they should because they're a big component of a movie and they are a storytelling device. And this score is top notch. It works really, really, really well. Now, on the topic of effects again uh, and how this movie closes off, and again, it gets full spoilers here, but you have a cityscape of Hong Kong, presumably, looking utterly decimated. And it's, it's really, it is destroyed. And again, it has to be mentioned, tiny, tiny budget, really, really tiny budget, but tentpole property effects. It looks superb, it looks really, 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 really good. So this is all down to the VFX guys, of course, knowing grading, knowing lighting, uh, and how to work within the confines of a budget that they were given. 
Now, again, this is a creature feature, so I have to talk about the creatures, the aliens in this film. And I really like the effects, the creature design. The alien has flashes of blue and tentacles, uh, and the blue, it offsets the lighting used to bring it to life. And it starts off small and winds up bigger, maturing into this you know, massive beast, this massive creature. It's about the, you know, twice the size of a human. Now, it's really nicely designed. I like it, and although it's not incredibly original, it comes across really, really well in this film. So as far as shorts go, there is often potential for them to become features. Uh, and of course, you know, there are some one and done shorts. They can't be expanded. They have a great idea, uh, but it's not something which can be stretched out to a feature length runtime. So The Fisherman, for me, is the former. I feel that this is a really, really well done short film with a great premise uh, and something which I genuinely feel could captivate an audience on a larger scale. So from a personal perspective, I would keep it away from Western hands and Western actors. And if this was ever to be developed, which, you know, it's been out for a little while now, so it's doubtful, but I feel that they should firmly keep in with what they have established because I think that this is the way to go with this particular project and most projects to be perfectly honest but this one in particular because the actors did so well in crossing the language barrier and acting doing their job I guess so again like I said please do go and compare it to host or the host uh, I feel that this could really be a sister film to that film and I would like to know what you think as well so anyway I hope you enjoyed this first and maybe the last short-sighted uh, a review of a short film that I feel needs more eyes on it. And yes, I'm aware it's got millions and millions of views. But look, not everyone has seen absolutely everything. And if I can do my part and I can push a short film just a little bit more into the public eye, then of course, why not? It's also something I think that you would really, really like. So please do go and check it out. It is linked down below in the description box. And I'd like you to come back here and tell me what you think. And if you've already seen it, come and tell me what you think anyway. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. So if you liked this video and you want to see more of this potential series, Short Sighted, then give this video a like and a share because liking a video tells me that you are actively engaged with it and it tells me that you want to see more of that particular product. So please do give it a like. Anyway, and as always, like I said, please do leave all of your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the world of pop culture and movie news and videos just like this. So to all returning subscribers, I am tentatively back online now, not like 100% or anything like that. I'm tentatively back online. I hope to stay online now. So look, you know, we can bring content back to normal now and we don't have to use a piece of crap phone to upload everything from. Um, everything's gonna change around me here as well. This is like my new set. I've got new chair because my I had my last one for like two years and it was breaking my back. So I bought a new chair uh, and yes, in the epic words of PewDiePie, it can do this. In fact, it can actually go all the way down, so that's quite good. Uh, but anyway, look, I've run for too long. Just a quick note on the end. Anyway, guys, hope to see you again. I've been Mr. H. Take care.